Hi there, Cheryl. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. So if you could, for us, please just introduce yourself. Uh, give us your name, your title, a short bio about yourself, your credentials, and then state the title of the article that you're going to be talking about today, please. Sure. So I'm Cheryl Della Sega. I'm a nurse, nurse practitioner and PhD. I am a professor in the Department of Humanities in the College of Medicine at Penn State University in Hershey. And I'm also a consultant to our Department of Nursing at Penn State Health. The title of the article that I'm going to be talking about today is Patient Prejudice Towards Minoritized Nurses. And um, it's based on uh, my bio, which is a long history of looking at issues, relational issues um, for women in various settings. I've written a lot about nurses' relationships with each other and so on. So that's kind of my background. Fantastic. And with this topic being such a big topic and an important topic, give an overview of uh, why nurses should read this article. Sure. So I was mentoring one of my co-authors, uh, Dr. Adriana Andre, and um, she was very interested as an immigrant physician in the treatment that she saw herself and colleagues often be on the receiving end from patients who saw them as different or minorities. And so she, we started with her work looking at physicians, but from that came the interest in nurses, my interest, because I know nurses are at the bedside a lot more than physicians or any were the professionals with the most patient contact of anyone. And I knew that I had heard from students and had heard stories before of nurses who were minoritized, being from a minority group, being um, receiving comments from patients that were disrespectful, hurtful, sometimes unintentional, but sometimes very intentional, things like, oh, your English is so good, or I want an American nurse, I don't want a foreign nurse, uh, where did you grow up, what country are you from? And all of these things really impact nurses deeply because it you know, can address the, their competence, their ability to be a um, nurse to this patient. And it's also kind of an ethical issue because you've committed to caring for someone who may not be treating you very well. Yeah, it's such an important topic, and with, with a lot of it going on all across the country, it, was there anything specifically that made you want to write an article on this topic, or was it sort of just everything you mentioned before? Well, you know, when uh, Dr. Andrea and I were doing her study, there was a lot written about providers being racist towards patients, and there was a lot of research done on that, and it was interesting to think about the opposite scenario where a patient might be racist towards a provider. And there wasn't much literature around, and especially with nurses, I was able to find very few uh, research studies that were written about nurses from minority groups who got this disrespect or uh, mistreatment from patients. So that's that really intrigued my interest, and we used the um, some of the information from some qualitative interviews that we did with nurses about their experiences and structured this uh, survey, which went out broadly, um, and we got a, a very robust response. Well, that's great. And with how impactful this article, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and with how impactful this article will be for nurses who read it, wh what are like two to three things that you would want them to specifically take away from this article when they read it? Sure. Uh, first off, that it, it when it happens to you, if you're a nurse who's from a minority group and you get some of these comments or behaviors, I mean, sometimes it was so bad that patients would refuse care from a particular nurse. So if that happens to you, don't let it reflect on who you are or your competence or your abilities because it's more about the patient and their problems than about your abilities. So it can feel very hurtful and very damaging, but try and not um, allow that to happen. Um, a second thing would be and I think I encourage this with all groups because patients are more tense these days, they're more complex, uh, healthcare is more complicated. Just kind of um, thinking ahead of time, if somebody says something to you that is disrespectful or mis you know, a, a form of mistreatment, what might you respond? And some nurses you know, have a whole set of things that they would say, like they might use humor and say, you know, somebody asked them, well, what country did you grow up in? And they might say, well, you guess, see if you can guess. And then it kind of puts the power back in your hands 
and turns the table. Um, but you know, sometimes you can just answer matter-of-factly without emotion and move on to the next thing. Um, but the third thing is that I think all of us who are not from minoritized groups need to be bystanders that who are aligned with nurses who get these comments and allow patients to know that this is not, not acceptable. It's not acceptable to our colleagues that we know these nurses, that they're cherished uh, co-workers, and we want to see them treated with the same kind of respect as, as everyone else. Those are all great takeaways, and thank you again for writing this article for American Nurse. We really appreciate it, and thank you again for sitting down today to, to give us a little bit of background on your article. Sure. Thank you.